Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths for both men and women in America. One of the major challenges facing physicians is the all-too-common inability to quickly and confidently identify lung cancer. However, at El Camino Hospital, Dr. Ganesh Krishna and James Canfield are using a new technology called SuperDimension to aid in the earlier diagnosis and treatment of lung cancer. So SuperDimension manufactures electromagnetic navigation bronchoscopy, which is a device that is used to access the peripheral areas of the lung that is otherwise not accessible by conventional bronchoscopy. When I try to describe it to the patient, I say, well, I always refer to Star Trek. And when he wanted to look in the body, they always had this mystical screen that sort of came up, and all of a sudden you could see inside of the body. And they would laugh, and, and but that actually, in a simplistic way, sort of describes what this is. Ordinarily, to see inside the lungs, a doctor uses a bronchoscope. The flexible fiber optic tube is inserted through the patient's airway along with a small camera. However, the bronchoscope is too big to enter the lung's smaller peripheral airways. Superdimension addresses this shortcoming by allowing the bronchoscope to pass a thinner probe through the smaller airways. The probe collects data and relays it to a computer. This data is then processed to create a six-panel virtual video feed of the lungs. The procedure itself is done based on CT scan images of a patient, so it is an image-guided procedure. Uh, the CT scan is loaded up onto the Superdimension software and reconstructed into a three-dimensional view. This planned software is then overlapped on the patient's body and previously marked targets are the ones that we reach. Because the anatomy of the lung is extremely complicated. Where you would think something was, you've got to go off to the right and the left and up and down before you can actually get to where you see it. And so there, that's where super dimension comes into play. How the system works is this. The green dot is sitting out inside of the lung. Well, that dot has been put on top of the tumor. And you notice a green dot surrounded by a yellowish-orange circle. Well, that yellowish-orange circle mimics what is on the handle of the device that she has. So when we're out in the area, the GPS device that's within the system will say, go right, go left, go up, go down. And when it tells us to go that direction, we rotate that little yellow uh, disc that's on the handle to the direction that it told us to do that. So that when she squeezes the handle, it flexes the tip in the direction that the arrow says. So when we get to the space that we want to be, we'll then take out the tip that guided us there and we'll pass through that channel, the needles, the forceps, all of the other utensils necessary, the tools necessary to take samples out of that tumor. The person who is looking at the specimen that I collect from the patient's lungs is a cytotechnologist and he or she looks at the slides and gives me a feedback as to if they see suspicious cells and depending on the clinical picture of the patient, we have a high or low index of suspicion for malignancy or alternate possibilities including infections or other inflammatory lung diseases. If you have something that is suspicious to be cancer, and right now, by all clinical accounts, it's only in one section of one part of the lung, you want to know if that's cancer or not. Because if it's like that, you got it, now it's a surgical cure. Before the advent of this device, radiologists could stick a needle through, but it had its own complications to it. So standard procedure countrywide at that time was doing serial CT scans. So they would say, okay, we'll get a CT scan on this in 30 days to see if it's growing. Because at the time that they saw it, it was only 10 millimeters big. Now we get to those. And as technology even gets better and more precise, uh, we're looking at probably getting at things that are six millimeters, and that's astonishing. With the number of new cancer patients constantly and rapidly increasing every year, it's easy to believe that scientific innovation has joined the millions of victims claimed by cancer. Technologies like SuperDimension and physicians like Dr. Krishna remind us that while cancer may represent the largest and most challenging set of problems ever faced by the medical community, those problems do come with an expiration date. Every day, new research is pioneered, new technologies are developed, and new procedures are implemented. And as each new day begins, science dares us to dream bigger than we did the day before and to replace temporary ailments with lasting cures.